Hello everybody, I'm Nerdy Guy. BlizzCon is over, and I've had some time to gather my thoughts about the new World of Warcraft expansion. And even though I barely make videos anymore, you bet your fucking ass I'm going to make a video about a World of Warcraft expansion. Duh. So, in order to make the videos shorter, because usually my Warcraft announcement, Warcraft expansion announcement thoughts are like 16 to 20 minutes long, I decided to split this up into three parts. So, it's going to be one part about lore, one part about gameplay, and one part about World of Warcraft Classic, because I'm going to talk a little about that too. This, however, is the lore video. So, there seems to be a lot of lore, a lot of important events going to go down in this expansion, and it's going to be fucking amazing. And uh, what we know so far is, first of all, Sir Garrus, uh, after we defeat him, he throws his sword at Azeroth and stabs Silithus, which is a region, for those who don't know. It's a zone in southern Kalimdor. And this causes the Titan inside Azeroth to start bleeding, and her blood comes out and crystallizes in the form of what is known as Azerite. I have a little script on my computer, that's what I'm looking at. And Magda Bronzebeard, who is the speaker for the Titan, gives us this necklace called the Heart of... what's it called? Heart of Azeroth. And... Apparently, as I understand it, lore-wise, it's going to suck up at nearby Azerite and help heal the Titan. But... Functionally, I'm gonna go into that on the gameplay video. But... This, uh, despite all the indications that this would be a old god expansion or void related, this instead turns into a faction war. However, people like Nobel, and I fully agree with him, point out that this will probably be a, a faction war that leads into a more important event. I, I don't think they're going to stick with a faction war all the way through, because I don't think that's like, the end boss is going to be weird. I think that by the end we are either going to be facing an old god or it's going to be setting up facing the old gods for the next expansion. But what we know is Telrazil burns to the ground. Now, on BlizzCon they were a little bit vague about which happens first. Does, does Telrazil burn first or does Undercity get attacked first? Uh, but since then they've clarified that no, Telrazil gets burnt down first and the Alliance attacks Lord Ron as revenge. And at first, I actually thought it was the other way around. I thought the Alliance attacked first, and Sylvanas as revenge burned down Teldrassil. But due to some of the lines in the trailer, combined with the fact that as Anduin is there himself, leading the charge on Lordaeron, uh, he's always been such a like peace-loving character. I have a hard time seeing him just attacking the Undercity out of the blue. So he would need some sort of heavy provocation to do that, something like burning down the Teldrassil. But... Yeah, apparently if the expansion starts off with the Alliance attacking the Undercity. And uh, apparently they don't manage to actually hold it, but they demolish it to the point where it's just a ruin. Well, like, like Lizard put it, even more of a ruin. So the Alliance is then pushed back to Stromgard, which is going to be the first Warfront. Which, uh, yeah, I'm going to go into that on the gameplay video. Holy fuck, that looks exciting. But if I understand, they're also going to take Gilneas. So they're going to have two, like, big points of battle, key points in this battle. It's going to be Stromgard and Gilneas, both of which are protected by walls. So it's... I'm excited. I want to see Gilneas again. I want to go back to Gilneas. My worgen misses Gilneas. All his favorite shoe toys are still there. But with this war lining up, it seems like it's getting poised for a horde control Kalimdor versus an alliance control Eastern Kingdoms. And... I, I'm excited for that. I, I've been expecting that change for quite a while. I'm surprised they haven't done it yet. Uh, there's still going to be some fighting for it. Like, like I said, Alliance is going to have to defend Stromgard from attacks from the Horde. But one thing that bothers me though, you know, with the Other City and Telrassil gone, I have a feeling that they're going to have like a bronze dragonflight person somewhere you can talk to that's going to take face you and take you back into the old version. Like, it, feel, it feels like it's obvious that they're going to do that, but I don't want them to do that because it cheapens the impact of losing these zones if you just go back. I don't even I didn't even like that they did that with Theramore. Theramore should be gone, and even more so with the Undercity and Telrassil because you don't need to quest there to get achievements to get lore master or anything like that. There's nothing of importance there. So, yeah, I don't like that. I hope they don't, but they probably will. We're also getting allied races, which is fucking sweet. I mean, that's just a fantastic... They found a way to add races to the game 
with like half the work because they don't need to create a starting zone or a brand new starting experience they don't even need to make a mount all they need to do is just add the race start level 20 go ahead so there's plenty of races that could be added this way like obviously the jinju and the hosen from pandaria is perfect examples they're already allied with the horden alliance so it would be fucking sweet like the jinju could have increased water breathing and the hosen could have increased speed or something like that i mean they're monkeys but there's so much more, like ogres. Except they, it would have to be like slightly smaller ogres so they can fit through doors. Or if they could add an animation that makes the hordes like bow down every time they enter a door, that would be cool. But that would be a lot of work. Uh, but something I would like to see for the Alliance is the Arakoa. Because the Arakoa has worked with the Alliance in the past. And, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, they hate the orcs. They just straight up hate orcs, so they're not gonna work with the horde. So we could probably get them to ally with us. Now, the only problem is that it would either, it would either have to be the uh, alternate drainer Arakoa, which mostly hate us, or we have to find some way of curing the deceased Arakoa that is in the out Outland currently. Because I don't I don't want the deceased Arakoa, I want the like, full glorious Arakoa that can fucking fly. But ally races, they said they're going to add more. I don't know if they, if they meant in this expansion or in the next expansion. But if they had more, I would love it if they added more with patches. It would be just, it would make my day. <laughs> I already have like a full 12 characters. So for when, the second they announced it, I was going through all my characters and think like, which ones am I going to race change to these? But then they dropped a great new announcement that I'm going to talk about more in the gameplay section. But they're adding six new character slots. Six. Holy fuck. Thank you, Blizzard. Fucking thank you. So, the two new continents is Kulturas and Sandalar. Now, Kulturas is exciting because we haven't seen it. We just know it's there. It's Jaina Proudmoore's home, hometown, homeland, whatever. Uh, it's a naval nation that was controlled by Admiral Proudmoore until uh, Rexar and the others straight up killed him with Jaina's permission because he wanted to start a war that Jaina didn't want. And now Jaina's the one who wants that war, so... Yeah, things didn't turn out great for her. I'm way more excited about Sandalor though, even though I play Alliance and I won't see it as much. Suldasar is the oldest city on the planet. Like, it, it was one... This Sandalari is such an, so, uh, such an old tribe that Suldasar is the oldest city on the planet. And apparently it was this huge, glorious mountain city before the Sun Ring, but now it's an island city. And a lot of people are wondering, like, haven't we been fighting the Sandalari for several expansions, like since Pandaria, and even before that during Cataclysm, and yes, but that was a splinter faction. There's some, there's, there's this dude named Prophet Sul, and Prophet Sul had visions of that Sandalari would start sinking into the sea. Now, uh, King Rastakhan wanted, just wanted to get, far, get rid of him, so he said, okay, fine, leave, find this new homeland, we don't give a shit. And then the Cataclysm happened, and Sandalari started sinking into the sea. So... A lot of people started following Prophet Sewell, saying like, well, this guy clearly knows what the fuck he's talking about. And Prophet Sewell is the one who united all the troll tribes and attacked us and tried to take land at Pandaria. And uh, we must be kicking ass all over the planet. So he's probably lost a lot of followers. And apparently we're going to solve that civil war, playing as Horde through Sandalari. Sandalar. There also, there also talked about a raid called Uldir. Uh, Uldir is a Titan facility in that's in Sandalar. And at first I was worried, like, don't tell me that's an assault person, because that would be way too... They would undersell it, like, fuck. Uh, but no, apparently it's going to contain some sort of troll god that the Titans accidentally cre accidentally created that is infused with old god power. And they sealed him inside there, but the, the seals are breaking, so he's about to escape, and we need to get there and fucking kill it. That sounds exciting. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. As long as it's not in the South Prison, I'm happy. Uh, they talked about how the next raid is going to be about Queen Ashara. So we're finally going to deal with her. Uh, which is, well, for those of you who doesn't know, you should know this by now, but she's the leader of all the Naga. She's the former Night Elf Queen who betrayed them, sided with the Burning Legion, and then when the Sun Ring happened and she fell into the ocean, she made a deal with some dark power, most likely in the South, who turned her into a Naga. Her and a lot of other highborn. 
But Nesoth, as I've talked about, what's the deal with him? Like, I, I was almost certain he would be the end boss of this expansion. I don't think he's going to be the end boss. Like, this doesn't seem to be a Void-related expansion. Uh, but as I said in the beginning, I think that, that by the end, we're either going to be dealing with the Old Gods or setting up for the next expansion to deal with the Old Gods. Because I don't think it's going to end with a faction war. It's going to start with a faction war that flows into something else. And lastly, no, oh wait, two points left, sorry. Uh, they said they're going to focus more on character stories, something that I'm happy about, because they didn't really do that in Legion. But, you know, get, give the characters we like a chance to, like, grow and experience things, and yeah, that's a good idea. And now, the actual last point, book hype. That's just what I wrote down in my, in my script here. Book hype. Christy Golden is releasing a new novel. Fuck yes. Christy Golden is, in my opinion, the best of the Warcraft authors, and she's releasing a book that's going to tie the gap between Legion and Battle for Azeroth. Thank you. Yes, I'm really excited for this book. And there's some speculation going on. Like I said, Teldrassil burns down. And a lot of people think that the people who did that weren't Sylvanas, like she didn't sanction that attack. That rather, uh, we find out in the prologue that there's this group called the Desolate Council that was formed to take over Sylvana's duties as leader of the Forsaken, where she became warlord of the entire horde. And the speculation is that the uh, Desolate Council launches an attack on Teldrassil without permission, and does so just to start a war that Sylvanas is going to lose, because the Desolate Council wants to die. They, they didn't want to be resurrected in the first place. And they're quite sick of living. So, that's a good theory. You know, that's a theory I think I can get behind. But I also wouldn't be surprised if Sylvanas just straight up burns down the Teldrassil. Like, one other speculation was that Teldrassil gets infused with Azerite, and she burns it down so the Alliance can't get to it. That would be fully possible. Like, I would not... <laughs> That's something I think Sylvanas would do. And yes, I know my Alliance bias is showing, but fuck court players. I'm still pissed about the Broken Shore. So that was it. That was a lore video. And it was, well, almost 13 minutes long. Okay, imagine if I tag gameplay onto this as well. It would be fucking insane. Anyway, that was all I had to say for this video. Uh, check out my gameplay video whenever that gets uploaded. And until next time, bye.